Brenna. Good morning, everybody. I'm Kimberly Roberts. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. It's good to see you here and to welcome you to this hour of worship. Thank you for driving in in that awful weather. We come together to share in life's meaning, to grow in care and community, and to open our hearts and minds to the sacred truth known by many, many names. Whatever your heritage, however your history, and whomever you love, you are welcome here. If you're here with us for the first time, we are especially glad that you decided to join us today. I have um, two people who came in this morning, and we're so glad that you're here today because there's plenty, plenty, plenty to eat, so stay afterwards if you can. The first one is Jasmine Stock from Port Deposit, and you are a lifelong UU, it says. Jasmine, could you raise your hand? or say, Hi, welcome. We're really glad to have you. And then Mike E. I don't know your history, Mike, but it's really glad to see <laughs> Good, we're glad to have you here today. <laughs> you can share with us later. He told me he was confused. I figured he'll fit right in. Yeah. <laughs> Do we have anybody on Zoom who'd like to introduce themselves? Do you see anyone in the chat? If you are out there, um, please feel free to sign our virtual guest book. There's a link in the chat. It's completely safe, and we would love to help you on your spiritual journey. And for those of you who visited today, I assume you signed our guest book because I got your name, so thank you. I have a few announcements today. Here is um, something from Trisha. This is from Trisha. I just wanted to advertise our holiday bazaar, which is coming up, and our cookie walk, and that's going to be on Friday, December 2nd. From 9 to 8, is that true, Trish? 8, wow. And then Saturday, 8 to no noon. So we're really going to need some volunteers for that. We need people to bake goods, people to bring in. Like if you're getting rid of some Christmas ornaments or your parents downsized and they have a box someplace, we'd love to have that sort of stuff because it really sells. And also if you have some purses, scarves, soaps and lotions, jewelry, fine art, any sort of a thing, that you think might sell for Christmas gifts, um, we can sure use them. They're always a success as well. And Trish Tatum is your contact for that, and there she is waving her hand. Trish, can you stand up so we can see you? Thank you. <laughs> and this is a reminder about our auction coming up. This is, we're gonna have a couple selfie booths there for everybody, so you can take pictures in your um, favorite costumes from your vintage TV characters that we're hopefully gonna dress up for, because we're gonna have really great prizes, um, special Emmys for best costumes in westerns, comedies, dramas, police things, so that should be a lot of fun. Donations. We need donations for this auction, and we need to have them by September the 25th, the last Sunday in September. I have this posted on the door of the coffee, um, coffee room. Some of the ideas are to provide an experience. For example, you might want to treat somebody today at the vineyards of Harford County, or you might want to take them on a brewery crawl or do a picnic, give them theater tickets, game tickets. You could provide a service. You could do tax prep, room painting, yard work, photography session, online consulting and coaching, errand running. There are endless options there. And then if you're comfortable doing it, you can do some online classes or you can do in-person um, classes. Some of our most popular have been our crafting classes. I know we have a lot of knitters, crocheters, quilters, and acrylic paint pourers in our group. So if you would like to um, offer one of those classes, that would be so wonderful. I could, because I, I need to spend my money at this auction. <laughs> also, original arts and crafts created by members are perennially favorite auction items. So this will be up on the door for you to look at later. There's an online donation form that is, honest to God, the easiest online donation form you could ever do. So, right, Beth? You've <laughs> so just fill that out. And I think that's it for my announcements this morning. And thank you, everybody, especially our tech team who made this happen this morning. Thanks. Do we have the video for the prelude? Hi. 
As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sisters, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sisters, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the rope and crown, good Lord, show me the way. Oh, brothers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, brothers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown, good Lord, show me the way. Oh, mothers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, mothers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown, good Lord, show me the way. Oh, fathers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, fathers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown, good Lord, show me the way. Buenos días, buenos días, bienvenidos y bienvenidas. Welcome and good morning. I am the Reverend Maria UT McCabe. My pronouns are she, her, and ella. And it is a joy and a privilege to be here with you this morning on this In Gathering Sunday. I've, I've changed my demeanor about rain ever since I planted bushes this summer. And they said, you know, you're going to need to water them every day. So I'm, I'm all about rain now, <laughs> but I still have to buy an umbrella. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. You know, I've loved that song for a really long time, and I never learned until recently that there's, there's an interpretation of it that, that really makes sense. We really don't know where it came from, but it's first listed in the late 1800s in a book of, of songs, in a, in a section of songs from slavery. And so let's go down in the river is, is a way of getting to safety because in the river, if you're being followed by dogs or you know, people, you, you can be safe. Study the way, the starry crown, much of these journeys were taken by following the stars. So it, it kind of gives me a chill to realize that song has so many, so many layers of, uh, of, of meaning. I add my welcome to the welcome that Kim shared and the, the choir shared with their beautiful music. And as we enter into our spirit of worship, I invite us to remember that this fellowship sits on the ancestral land of the Susquehannock people a people that ranged not just from this part of no Northern Maryland, but through Pennsylvania and on into Ohio. Um, 
I've also enjoyed on this is for you. I found some more resources to learn more about them. So that's that's uh, that's great. So we may we honor the history. May we honor their culture and their presence. This is the space we make sacred by our presence. No matter how we join this worship service, we make this presence sacred by our presence. We make it sacred by bringing and sharing every bit of who we are. Our questions are every bit as important as our certainties, actually sometimes more so. Our doubts, every bit as important as our joys. This is the place where we come to renew our spirits and allow ourselves to open to spiritual growth. So I'm going to invite us this morning, as I have been, to take a moment of silence or prayer, if you are someone who likes prayer, in support of the people of Russia and the people of Ukraine and the peoples of Europe as this war of conquest continues to have ripple effects all the way around the world. So will you join me in a moment of silence? And blessed be. So this morning, we're going to look forward and we're going to look back. We're going to look forward at this new church year. And we're going to look back to the 1970s and in particular to the culmination of something that started in the 1970s and took place in 1980, which was the very first water communion, also known as the water ritual, created by women Unitarian Universalists, courageous women, and deeply spiritual women, steeped in the feminist movement, who wanted to bring into our movement a different kind of spirituality. They wanted to bring a ritual that would draw together not just the energies of tradition, what had been traditionally male-dominated religious traditions, but bring into our tradition a, a, a whole different sense of women's spirituality. The feminine divine, as you may have heard it called um, in, in recent years. And so they created collectively, they created this beautiful ritual. And if you see on the, on the uh, uh, front of your order of service, this, this beautiful graphic was created by um, with a large donation from the Harvard Library to celebrate these women. And the title of the service they created was Coming Home Like Rivers to the Sea. So we will look back to their, to their legacy and honor it today and look forward. What can we today bring into our faith tradition that is much needed? So let us come into the spirit of worship with these beautiful words from Kale Rice. This is called All Rivers Run to the Sea. It starts with a drop, then a trickle, a burble, a rush of water bubbling toward its destination, and finally, the wide, endless sea. All rivers run to the sea. Today, maybe you brought water, maybe you didn't, but we will pour it into a common bowl Though our experiences are diff have differed, these waters mingle, signifying our common humanity. Today you have come to share in this sacred community, and when you depart, may you depart this sacred space with hearts filled with hope for new beginnings, a fresh start. You may go forth, but please return to this community 
where rivers of tears may be shed, where dry souls are watered, where your joy bubbles, where your life cup overflows, where deep in your spirit you have found in this place a home. All rivers flow to the sea. Welcome home. Let us worship together. Kim, will you help us light our chalices? I'd like to share these chalice words by Janet Parsons. The flame of our chalice this morning is a symbol of the warmth and brightness of our connections. The flame lights our way back together again from our time of separation. And it lights our way forward into this new church year of promise and renewal. And if you will, would you please stand in body or spirit and join me in singing a rousing rendition of Enter, Rejoice, and Come In. Okay, friends of the forest, I'm going to invite you all now to bring up your bags, your computer bags, your backpacks, anything that you would like to bless, and we're going to set them over here. Come on down for our backpack blessing. Just deposit your bags right there. We're going to make a nice, neat pile to bless. My song. Thank you. Wonderful. I don't need this mic after all. All right, friends. So another year has gone by. And again, here we have a pile of bags and packs. As we embark on another year together in our fellowship, we're also embarking on another year of schooling and another year of work, errands, projects. It's amazing how much we will carry in these bags to make this all possible. So won't you join me now in our annual blessing of the backpacks? The response is, we will with great rejoicing. We will with great rejoicing. Yeah, thank you. Let's begin by taking a moment to reflect on the hands which made our bags the materials they're made of, where they come from. If you're at home, you might like to hold your bag, run your fingers along the seams. If you're with me, just cast your eyes on this pile of bags. 
reflect on how they were assembled. Like all things in life, these bags did not just appear out of nowhere. There was a cost to creating these bags. Labor of others brought us these bags. We begin our blessing by honoring those who have worked to produce the things we need in life. We honor those whose labor paved the way for us to continue our journey. Try reaching your arms out in front of you as though you were tracing the trail they forged ahead of you. Now, let's think about what goes inside our bags. Books, pens, lunches, phones, iPads, toys, papers, more. When we pack our bags, we have a choice. What do we want to bring with us? What do we want to carry? And what will we leave behind? What is essential to our journey? What is fun to have along for the ride? What is unnecessary and no longer serves us? Think about what you want to put in your bag and what things you should really, really take out and leave at home or even throw away altogether. Think about the good things you want to carry with you and the things you are ready to let go of. We want these bags to serve you through the coming year, not to become storehouses of burden. So let's reach our arms up and over our heads, bringing them down into our chest like we're loading something precious into a great big bag. Now hold, take hold of that thing which no longer serves us and been clattering around at the bottom of your bag for God knows how long. And we're gonna pull it back up over your head and we're gonna yeet it over there. So we've blessed our bag's beginnings and we've blessed their contents. Now let's bless their purpose. I'm going to invite you to speak aloud, whether you're at home or here in the sanctuary, you're gonna speak aloud for me what you're going to use your bag for, okay? So on the count of three, you're just gonna shout it out. Ready? One, two, three. Work. Library. Thank you very much. Now here's a blessing for your bag as you take it along for that task. Your bag will be comfortable to carry, never too heavy, because we don't want to see you burdened with too much on your plate. Your bag will be a source of joy with something silly or delicious tucked away in case of too much stressful seriousness, TM. Your bag will be useful to you in the ways you need because we want you to have the right tools to succeed. Your bag will show off your style and complement every outfit, even on really bad days, because we always think you look good. Your bag might get forgotten or left behind, but the things which are really important to you will always be found. Your bag will get messy and dirty and tattered because we want you to go on the adventures to which you're called. Your bag will sometimes surprise you, containing a note you didn't write or a treat you didn't buy or a lunch you didn't pack because we know you are loved by people who want to do kind things for you. Your bag will be with you for this whole year, carrying our blessings for your wellness and safety and celebrating all the wonderful things you bring to our community. Is this a blessing you want to bestow upon these bags? If yes, the answer is yes with great rejoicing. Yes. yes with great rejoicing. Then our bags are so blessed, beloveds. If you're at home, give your bag a really big hug. Don't feel silly about it. It's about great rejoicing. This community has just affirmed a beautiful blessing on your bag and on you, and big hugs are called for. For those of you present here in the sanctuary, you'll be collecting your bag after service. And please see me before you leave so that I can give you a beautiful tag to take with you, a very schnazzy affirmation tag to take with you to put on your backpack. Very schnazzy. Virtual attendees, drop your name in the chat and we will make sure that you get one of these tags as well, fret not. And um, after service, just I will be down the Faith Formation Wing, so that's where you will find me to get your, your tags. Thank you all very much. You're awesome. <laughs> so I learned, I learned from our, our forum, our friends on the UFHC forum, that Queen Elizabeth carried a sandwich in her bag. Now that's what I call royalty. <laughs> 
All right, dear friends, this is the time in our service where we have our candles of sharing. This is a time when you are asked, invited to come, if you're here in the sanctuary, to come forward, share a joy, a concern, a gift, happiness, uh, out loud if you wish, and light a candle. If you are joining us via Zoom, please let me know in the chat so we can call on you light a candle for you and and uh, hear your voice. If you would like me to read your candle, I'm happy to do that. It's an important time for us to listen with our hearts as lovingly as we can and for us to speak from our hearts as lovingly as we can. So I invite you to come forward. This is not a time for church announcements. And if you wish to share somebody else's story, please make sure you have their permission. So please, come forward. All right, where are we? We are here. Oh, no, we're not. Okay. Sorry about that, folks. It's been that kind of morning. It's a beautiful, but a little discombobulating. Kim, will you share the words of our offering, please? Y'all start digging deep. So, friends, the voices of progressive faith communities have been silenced, sometimes even by big money. Donations given in exchange for a watering down of the core message of justice love and compassion and yet there has never been a greater need for progressive inclusive and loving religious community we come to you for support of our mission our staff and the everyday needs of keeping our doors open and on this second tuesday our special collection will go to the community outreach committee and specifically to the welcome one emergency shelter this is a vital and long-standing commitment of this congregation to serve that the unhoused in Harper County with food. So won't you please give generously? A link's gonna go into the chat right now for those of you on Zoom, so you can click and contribute securely. And the baskets are being passed right now. So thank you all in advance for your generosity, and let's enjoy Brenna's beautiful interlude. Thank you, Kim. I was born by the river in a little town, just like that river. I've been running ever since. It's been a long, long time coming, but I know. A change is gonna come It's been too hard living But I'm afraid to die Cause I don't know what's out there beyond the sky It's been a long, long time But I know a change is gonna come. Yeah, I go to the movie and I go downtown. Someone keeps telling me don't hang around. It's been a long long time coming but I know a change is gonna come then I go to my brother and I say brother help me please
but he winds up knocking me back down on my knees. There have been times when I thought I couldn't last for long. Now I think I'm able to carry on. It's been a long, long time coming, but I know a change is going to come. It's been a Changes gonna come. Thank you. Sam Cook sings that a change is gonna come, which may be the last thing anyone wants to hear right now. But here's the change that I think is going to come. Not just think, that I believe, actually. I believe with all my heart. Things are going to get better. Things are going to get better. Just like they get better for Sam Cooke in the song. After everything he's been through, something, something comes to fill him up. Something comes to carry him through. I believe that's what's going to happen. Not just for our planet, for our country, for our community, and for this community of faith. Things are going to get better. It may not happen as quickly as any of us want it to. It may not happen with like a, you know, ding or a dee 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 or, you know, and all of a sudden, but it, it will. And it probably won't look like, at least in my experience, it never looks like I think it should look in advance. But nonetheless, it's better and it's better than what I could have imagined. I've been thinking, I guess I've been thinking about Queen Elizabeth, who I have a in my imagination, a special link with because she was uh, crowned right after I was born. And uh, she's been queen my entire, my, my entire life. But I was thinking about her service during World War II as an auto mechanic. And that made me think about how this terrible world war, which decimated so many people at the same time, offered tremendous opportunities for women and how we flooded into the workforce and we started to fix cars and fly transport planes and, and make decisions and wear padded shoulders. And it was a different and new and beautiful adventure for so many of us. We made victory gardens. And then after the war ended, the pain was such that collectively we we desperately, as a, as a global community, we wanted things to go back to normal. And we, we made beautiful efforts that, that made a big difference and ushered in an era of, of prosperity. But for, for women who had tasted a different way of life and a different level of adventure and opportunity, it was, it meant a return to a role in society that we had maybe outgrown, that maybe felt confining, and God bless June Cleaver, but the, uh, they never got the pearls and the, and the apron. And maybe for many of us, it, it felt reassuring for a time to, to know the parameters I'm not saying that everybody agreed. 
but there too, a change. That change that had happened, you know, grew roots. And eventually, not that long afterwards, you know, the new wave of a feminist movement came up and, and a different perspective on how having, it didn't, if somebody won, it didn't mean somebody had to lose. It meant that everybody, everybody could be lifted. That change could lift everybody. I'm thinking about that now and remembering that now as I, as, as I remember the, the women in our own uh, religious tradition, Carolyn McDade and uh, Lucille Shuck Longview. Lucille renamed herself Longview when she became a crone, an elder. She renamed herself Longview because she carried a long view not just a view of this moment, but a, a long view. She probably would be surprised to know that her ritual is now being used in every Unitarian Universalist congregation, you know, 60 plus years, 60 plus years later. My message to you today as I look forward to this new year of ministry, you know, and actually our years never end and they never start, but new beginnings, fresh pencils are good. My message to you about this new year of ministry is, is a message of practicing, coming back in some ways to our history, to our history as a very resilient faith tradition open to change, open to growth, but also fiercely, fiercely proud of who we've been and what we've done. Where one view doesn't, you know, negate the other. Where we have learned and applied so many lessons and we have failed as a tradition and as individuals and we have failed and we have learned from those things. And we've, we've met the moment, but also cherishing what we carry. So my vision is a return, as we return to our principles, that we practice hope. Practice hope. Practice unity, not conformity. Do you know the difference? Right? We can be engaged in a unified, I hope we are engaged in a unified effort in our mission to grow spiritually ourselves and to foster spiritual growth and to be present in the world in the way our faith calls us to be. Without, without thinking the same way about it. We don't all have to agree. But if we practice hope, and if we practice compassion, all of this is in our principles. And if we practice courage, the way our ancestors taught us to, we can grow as individuals and as a community. And some of us practice hope differently, right? Some of us practice hope through social justice because that kind of action or activism is what most suits us. Some of us practice hope and, you know, we've talked, I've talked with you about the, the kind of panorama for social justice for this coming year, how we're working on a, you know, uh, on a new paradigm. I had a great conversation with uh, a, a woman from Falston who called interested in seeing how we might work together on, on some of these things. So our community connections are building our, our the possibilities in that area are continue to grow. Bridge Maryland has some fantastic efforts uh, going on as well. Some of us need to practice hope in silence, in communal 
meditation and communal prayer in time that doesn't barrage us with input, but time that allows us to expand. We're going to start, I mean, it's wonderful that we have now meditation again in, on Sunday mornings, but we're also going to start our Vespers services on at least one Sunday evening a month, starting in October, and hopefully more. If more people are interested, we're going to start Vespers services. Some of, us, some of us practice hope through communal events, like today's potluck, the holiday bazaar, which I'm already really excited about what's going to happen, the auction. You know, these things that bring us together and allow us time to just be with one another and rebuild our connections. Those connections may become deeper because the pandemic came close to severing them. They, they'll come back stronger. We can't change what has happened as much as any of us would like to. But we can change ourselves going forward. And we can allow, we can have compassion for ourselves Maybe that's a really good place to start. Allow ourselves and in one another to make mistakes, to fail. I don't know about you, but I learned from my failures. I don't learn from my successes. All I learned from succeeding is, yay, I'm going to do that again. <laughs> right? But I learn from those places of, of, of you know, sometimes brokenness, sometimes failing colossally. Some of us practice hope by sharing our gifts with the community. And in addition to the projects, the, the amazing projects that the Community Outreach uh, Committee is doing, we've decided to expand our food cu cupboard to be open to the community. And we're going to open it on Thursday afternoons, every Thursday afternoon. So stay tuned. Of course, anyone here is welcome to avail themselves of that food cupboard, but you know, I, you, may, you may hear of us trying to solicit more, more supplies. So I ask us, in closing, I ask us to be open to experimentation Think of what would have happened if we hadn't experimented with technology, right? There would have been no way for us to be together. And now people can join us from wherever they are. So I ask us to be open. We're going to come to you in two weeks with a draft of a covenant. Will everybody who's here who is on the Covenant Task Force raise your hand? Okay, so Mary and Tricia and Beth and Joanne, myself and Shauna, um, Martina Kuzensky um, is also on uh, Rick Lund, um, Alex Sims, and have I left anybody out? David Callen. So we have we've been working really hard and are looking forward to sharing this this draft with all of you and we believe we believe that this covenant will help us live more deeply into our values and help guide us as we chart the path forward so i'm going to ask jen if there are a couple of things she would she would like to share was that me Good morning. Good morning again, friends. So um, you may have seen when you were coming in, that there's a circle of floor pillows at the back. And I've had some friends helping me on this weaving project. Everybody say, ooh, ah, OMG. Do you remember this? 
You've not seen it in this form, but last year you would have seen these. We all wrote on ribbons to make rain this time last year outside. This time, nature is providing it for us. We didn't have to make as many crafts. But like rivers to the sea coming home, we've been weaving all of the things that we wrote about, the things we bring to this congregation, the things that we get from this congregation, the way this community blesses us. And we've been weaving it together to create this, which will get a slightly more permanent frame in, in the future and hang somewhere in this building as a touchstone reminder. Other fabulous art projects you're going to be seeing soon as we're all coming home is the mural that we worked on in services. That's just about ready to hang. And when you come visit me after service down this hall, you will see the final art project that our summer camp students put together, beautifully framed. It's our incredible unity um, artwork piece. And I will just let it speak for itself when you come down there and see it. So I'm really looking forward to seeing all of you. As you drift by, please come say hi, because I'm still getting to learn half of your names, because I don't get to see you that much. <laughs> So I would love to see you, show you around the rooms that volunteers have labored over to deep clean and just talk about the wonderful things that, the possibilities that we see in these spaces. So thank you very much for all the ways that you are contributing and the, all the ways that we get to celebrate this community. All right, oh, this looks so pretty. I remember that they were, um, waving in the waving in the wind. All right, dear ones, before we have our water communion, I'm going to invite you to rise and body your spirit and let's sing um, number 1064 in the teal hymnal, Blue Boat Home. <laughs> seated or you may remain standing and because our benediction will be all of us so I invite you if you brought water or if you didn't to you can come up on either side of the of the sanctuary and we're going to have our benediction will be our water ritual the water communion so in 1997 you can go ahead and I'm just going to talk a little bit 1997 the women who created this ritual got back together and they remembered what happened, what they had done. And one of them said, 
This water symbolizes the sustenance and replenishing of those qualities I find good in myself. Another one said, the river is a symbol of the lasting power of life. The physical part of me may die, but like the river, my spirit will live on. I invite you to this morning, as you come forward, you'll see two pitchers. Feel free to pour your water in or pour some from the pitcher. And as you see the water going into the bowl and all of our waters coming together, I'm going to pour in our water from last year, last year's communion. I ask you to give a word of blessing for this congregation's journey in its new church year. What blessing will you give? You may share it out loud or hold it in your heart. I'm going to try not to catch on fire. Here we go. And I think both microphones work. Clarity and peace. Hope, hope and peace. May we share laughter. I put it in. Family and love. Peace and spiritual growth. From Ocean Point, Maine, we send all of you our love. From Holland Lake in the Flatwood, Flat, the Flathead National Forest, sorry, in Montana. Um, and my hope is, my blessing is that we may remember joy in our time together. If you're on Zoom and have blessings, please put them in the chat or unmute and share. Our daughter's home away from home in New York City and St. Mary's City, um, a blessing for family. This, this water is from Long Island Sound, where Cindy and I had a very, very relaxing time this past summer. collected this water from the Susquehanna River this morning. I hope to bless a new home here. This is from Pennsylvania. It says on the bottle. <laughs> Peace and love and laughter. You've got to keep laughing. This is from the St. Lawrence River, and my um, I, I pray for strength and energy. For grounding and growth. Thank you, Thank you all so very, very much. Jen, would you yes, come on, up, please? Oh, go ahead, Bess, go ahead. I have rainwater collected this morning in Whiteford, and my blessing is for us to love and honor the earth and remember that water is life, and we have to do what we can to keep it clean. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Anyone else on Zoom who would like to share? 
Thank you. Thank you again. We're going to close this morning as the four of us share a reading by Carolyn McDade. And uh, I reached out to her trust to make sure that we could have permission to, uh, to do that. And they joyously granted it. And this is called Coming Home. We are coming home to the spirit in our soul. We're coming home and the healing makes us whole. Like rivers running to the sea, we're coming home, we're coming home. As the day is woven into night, as the darkness lives within the light, as we open vision to new sight, we're coming home, we're coming home, we're coming home to the spirit in our soul. Bearing words born new of unto each day, speaking bold where only silence lay. As we dare to rise and lead the way, we're coming home, we're coming home. We're coming home to the spirit in our soul. As the full moon waxes into wane, changing, yielding all that she did gain. As from death she dares be born again, we're coming home, we're coming home. We're coming home to the spirit in our soul to reclaim the thinking of our mind, leaving shackles lying far behind, bearing hope for every soul confined. We're coming home, we're coming home. We're coming home to the spirit of our soul to create a world of joy and peace where the power of justice does release. Love abounding, wars forever cease. We're coming home, we're coming home. Thank you, beloveds. Amen, ashe, and blessed be. And as we listen to our postlude, I hope your appetites are growing. For those of you who are here, there's a beautiful potluck. Please, please take advantage of our Faith Formation Open House. And we're going to try to figure out a way to um, video some, some of the rooms so those of you on Zoom can see what we're showing off to everybody else. Thank you, everyone, for participating in this worship. And will you share our postlude? <laughs> you did back then you say hello like you did back when you first came my way time has been good to you i said i always knew who it would you're more lovely every day Just like a mighty river runs down to the sea, our friendship keeps growing, it was meant to be. It will never go away, it's deeper and stronger every day, like a river to the sea. You know you can
can count on me just like a mighty river runs down to the sea our friendship keeps growing it was meant to be it will never go away it's deeper and stronger every day like a river to the sea you know you can count on me That's all, folks. Time for potluck. Hello. If I may please have your attention briefly. One. Slide annou one uh, announcement I forgot to mention. The Social Justice Committee will also be hosting the Silent Witness uh, um, cer Ceremony on Sunday, October 2nd, and I'm helping coordinate all the volunteers and people who can help set up everything. If you're interested in volunteering, we would love to have your assistance. Please contact me, Mark Petriquin. You can email me if you're interested in helping out. Thank you. That's for the silent witness on October 2nd. Thank you.